a God of times and seasons. As for the children of Ezekiah, according to First Chronicles and chapter 12 and verse number 32, he says, as for the children of Ezekiah, they were men that were wise, they were skillful, they had understanding in the times of God, and they knew what Israel ought to do, and their brethren were at their command. They were wise, they were skillful. They had understanding in the times of God. Meaning, ladies and gentlemen, they were uniquely privileged to know and to understand what God expected men and women in that generation to do per time. Hear me, hear me loud and clear. God can do all things. God can do anything. But God cannot do all things at the same time. In Genesis chapter 1, verse number 1, we are told, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth, verse 2, says, Without so form and void. How come what God has created is without form and void? And the Bible says in Ecclesiastes that He has made all things beautiful in His time. How come a God that is beautiful, that makes all things beautiful, He has created the heavens and the earth, and suddenly the earth loses shape and form? In the beginning, he created the heavens and the earth. And the air was without shape and form. And the Bible said, and God said, let there be light. And light came. He separated the water from the sea. He caused even green herbs to come out of the earth. Then at the climax of creation, in verse number 26, he said, let's make mine our image and our own likeness. On the seventh day, the Bible said, God rested. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. And said it all right. God could have released everything he needed to create and to bring forth in one world. But he chose to prioritize his doings. He chose to do them step by step. Step by step. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Hear me ladies and gentlemen what you desire to become that god has planned you to become that you are not yeah you are not here that doesn't mean you shall not become you shall surely be as long as jehovah is on the throne you will surely be some years back i never saw gray hair on my hair but now gray hair is all over i tried to dye the hair to turn it black the more i tried to turn it black the more the hair says to me it's my time to show up as gray so i just let it be so no struggling, no quarreling. Gray hair, show up. It means that I'm growing younger in age. That's exactly what it means. What am I saying, ladies and gentlemen? What I was yesterday is not what I am today. And what I am today is not what I shall be tomorrow. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse number 18, but the path of the just is as a shining light. He is shining more and more unto the perfect day. Whether the devil likes it or not, your life, your tomorrow shall be better than what it is now. And that is where vision comes in. Eh? Your marriage shall be better than what it is. Your business shall be better than what it is. The church is moving from glory to glory, from strength to strength. But the power of the Holy Ghost, Vision 215, he has come to an end. Vision 220, he has started now with your eyes open. You shall behold Vision 2025 again. You shall behold it again. And you shall see it come to pass. I will do a new thing. What a new thing. God is a meticulous God. He doesn't stay on one face for too long. Constantly on the move. Constantly betting things. Constantly causing things to be. Constantly causing things to be. If you look at everything that God has created, the moon is con sorry, the earth is constantly spinning around the moon. Everything that God has made, they're constantly spinning, constantly spinning. And geographers make us understand that the earth is spinning around the orbit, is spinning and turning. Yeah, the law of gravity doesn't allow it to some assault. Spinning and tumbling at the same time. 
nothing is in a steady position. Look at it. Look at this. This offering bowl can remain here for the next 40 years. If no kinetic energy is applied on it, if no action is applied on it, it can remain here for the next 40 years. But when I come and I just begin to try to apply, even Shendor, you see it move. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a supernatural force that is come down from heaven that is out to catapult you from where you have been, even to where God wants you to be. In the name of Jesus Christ, I will do a new thing. A new thing he shall do. How we do a new thing? Isaiah chapter 42. Very briefly. <coughs> Isaiah chapter 42. If you go down in your Bible. 42 and verse number 9. Thank you. Isaiah 42 verse 9. Behold. The former things shall come to pass. Your days of struggling, they are over with. Your days of stagnation, they are over with. Your days of pain, they are over with. Your days of dishonor, they are over with. I will announce to somebody, your days of waiting for the fruit of the world, the days are over now. I say they are over now. I say they are over now. The days of begging, they are over. The days of hatred, they are over. In the name of Jesus Christ. He said, Behold, the former things have come to pass. They have not come to stay. The former things have come to pass. And new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. And before vision 2020 coming to pass, you have been told of them. Why? The former things have come to pass. Ladies and gentlemen, every ugliness you saw in your life yesterday, you will not sit in your tomorrow. A time came in the lives of the children of Israel when they came out of the land of Egypt and they were on their way to the land of promise. Watch it. They could see the red sea in front of them. They didn't know how they were going to be to pass. And God said to Moses, He said, Moses, say to these people, Egyptians are pursuing the behind. There's a race in front if for them to turn back, trouble, go forward, challenges. So they would have rather remained on a parallel position. He said, Say to them, the Egyptians said that you see today, you shall see them no more. I am here to announce to somebody the battles you have been seen in your marriage, the battles you have been seen in your career. From this day, you shall see them no more. I say you shall see them no more. You shall see them no more. You shall see them no more. If you believe that, lift your hand and shout amen. <laughs> if God's word is what God's word is, if God is what he says, he is in his word and by his word, this is coming to pass for you. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. What is God saying? That the former things are come to pass. Hear me ladies and gentlemen. God does not want you and I to get stuck on a particular position. He doesn't want you and I to get satisfied. Even where you are today. You know what? He has so much to release to man. And the problem that God has always had with man is Man gets over satisfied. Even with the good of today. Hear me ladies and gentlemen. The enemy of the best is the good of today. <laughs> I repeat that again. The enemy of the best is the good. You can hold on to the good. Celebrate the good. Over celebrate the good. Nothing wrong about celebrating the good. And you lose sight of the best. You lose sight of the best. Why did God say to Gideon that those that were going to battle with Gideon, they must have proven or tested so as to know men that were focused and future oriented? So, 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 legend. Thank God for where we are. Thank God for what God has done. 
even for the body of Christ on the face of the earth, ladies and gentlemen, this is not the best of God. I constantly say to myself, this is not the best of me. And this is not the best of you. Your best is yet to be seen. The Americans will always say, you aren't seen nothing yet. Come on, turn to your number and say, you aren't seen nothing yet. In my life, marriage and business. No, somebody is not talking. Okay, say it in Bini. <laughs> Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. By God, you aren't seen nothing yet. You never see anything. People are envious and jealous now because of where you are. Ladies and gentlemen, there are some of your enemies. When you are awake in the morning, they shall suffer her potential. You haven't seen nothing yet. You haven't seen nothing yet. Let me announce to you loud and clear what God is about to do in the church. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible says in Isaiah, chapter at the number two, from verse number four, he says it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord he shall be exalted above the mountains. He shall come up higher. He shall be exalted above the mountains. And I want to say, meaning the church of Jesus shall be bigger, more colorful, more exalted than any company, whether apple in the name of Jesus. He said, the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and the nations they shall flow into him ladies and gentlemen you don't know where you are you are in the kingdom that can never fail you are in the church that can never fail ladies and gentlemen hear me and hear me land clear a time is coming that prime ministers of nations shall be looking for seats in the church a time is coming that presidents and heads of states of nations they shall become ushers in our churches they shall head even transportation department if you believe that shall amen. amen it's coming to pass he's coming a time is coming ladies and gentlemen that the lies of former C. Joe, they become the cleaners in the church. I said to them, I said, Dangote and Liko can never win my envy. You know why? One day my servant pastor went out while he was in Lagos. <coughs> A guy took us to Intercontinental Hotel in Lagos. While we were there, somebody began to say, he said, people like me don't go to church. I said, why? He said, because we are so rich. I didn't say what. I said, God, you are speaking to me. I left that place challenge. I said, in my time, God will use me to raise men and women that will give such a man employment. You didn't hear what I said. You didn't hear what I said. Somebody says he cannot go to church because it's an occulty. Somebody says he cannot go to church because he's got money. Somebody says he cannot serve God because he wears a diamond ring. Ladies and gentlemen, a time shall come that your daughters and your little children shall be given diamond as your offering. It's coming to pass. It's coming to pass. Ketching Kuma was there. Eh? She said, I look forward to return where all the sick in the church shall be cleaned up. That became my driving passion. I'm looking forward to a time, ladies and gentlemen, that men and women will be flying jet to church services. Did you remember the last boxing contest that took place in the U.S. between Mayweather and the other young man? They showed a picture of what happened at the airport. The airport was jammed. What made the airport to be jammed? Not DC 47, not DC 777. Private individuals flew their private jets. I could see the parking system. The airport was jammed. It was as though they were parking bicycles. When I saw them, ladies and gentlemen, I said, Lord, men and women flew 
from various nations and from various states in the U.S. with their private jet to come watch two men kill themselves. I say in our time, members of the church of Jesus will fly the helicopters. I didn't hear someone say amen. Yeah. They will fly their private jets. Yeah. They will drive their Rolls Royces. Yeah. And they will come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nine, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. All of you, you come into church on a Sunday morning. That young man there is driving his Rolls Royce. The other one there is driving his Rolls Royce. The other one said, I am flying my helicopter. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. The prime minister of this nation want to find out what is happening here. And it shall come to pass for you. I say it shall come to pass for you. In the name of Jesus. Don't use the eye of yesterday to look at the church today. Don't use the eye of the SCU Scripture Union. We are the liking poverty to godliness. I was a part of it. I bought my total neck and my trousers. I had to put it under the foam for it to be squeezed. And when it became so squeezed, I wore it. I wore my total neck so squeezed. I wore my shirt on it so squeezed. And everywhere I went. Brother Chris, God bless you. If I lifted my hand, my armpit will shoot a particular order that will attract flies. That was who I was. My shoes, I made sure that they were the real Mr. Abdul shoes. Everywhere I went to preach to people, ladies and gentlemen, they will look me head to toe. If the Jesus you are talking about, we used to know you secondary school. You used to be a social prefect. You used to be a this and that. He, Jesus, I told you like this to Mr. Owe Digwe. I don't want to become a way to go myself. I need a forward moving God. What am I saying, ladies and gentlemen? By your lifestyle, much it you shall be attracted to Jesus Christ. By your affluence in life, much it you shall be attracted to Christ. In the name of Jesus. Turn to your name and say, I hate, I hate poverty. You didn't say that very well. Say, God, pony poverty. poverty. If you don't believe in poverty, look at someone and say, God, punish poverty. Behold, the former things shall come to pass. He said, The new things do I declare. 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 Isaiah chapter the number 43. Let's quickly do this. Isaiah 43. Before I bring in Apostle Valerie. Isaiah chapter 43. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 43. Okay, I'm done. Don't worry. Verse the number 18. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will walk. Come on, let us at the back say, I will war. I will war. You complain long enough about your husband. Your husband is turning a new leaf now. You complain long enough about your wife. Your wife is becoming that sweet 16. You've only desired her to be. If you believe that as a man, can I hear you say, yeah. yeah. Do we see our men in the house? Remember him of the former things. Neither consider the things of all. Behold, I will do a new thing. He shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the desert. Ladies and gentlemen, where you have never experienced favor, after today, favor shall answer to you there. 
where you have never experienced breakthrough according to the word of the law after today you shall see breakthrough there where you saw closed doors after today ladies and gentlemen you shall see the doors open by fire where you saw sickness you shall enjoy it now where you saw marital affliction you shall see marital bliss now say with me he shall do a new thing in my life in my marriage in my business in our church he says season of new things he says season of new things i don't know about here in some place in america i don't know about Atlanta. <coughs> at the end of every year people must change their furniture does it happen here yes, sir. it happens here but not in africa you must not change your furniture like that in africa you can use your furniture for 10 years the father can use the same furniture and hand them over to children even to grand grandchildren but in some place in america come december people are clearing their wardrobes they are clearing their houses why they want to usher it a new year and bring things new things into the home ladies and gentlemen our vision 215 is ending new things are coming into your life and your world in the name of jesus christ new things are coming no longer the former things but new things are coming now in the name of jesus what does it take for you only believe only what again believe. only believe and there shall be a performance of that that was spoken of the law glory to the name of jesus christ isaiah chapter 28 i'll give you two then i'm done isaiah chapter 28 i will do a new thing do you have that in your bible verse the number 21 i love this for the law shall rise up as a man perazin. He shall be wrought as in the valley of Gibeon. That he may do his work. His strange work. And to bring to pass his acts. His strange acts. Now therefore, be ye not mockers. Be ye not mockers. <laughs> Lest your bands be made strong. For I have heard from the Lord God of hosts a consumption, even the timing upon the whole air. Ladies and gentlemen, hear what God is saying. He said, if I say he's going to do a new thing, now he's spelling what he's going to do. He said that he will do a strange war. Why a strange war? What men don't believe that is what he shall bring to pass in your life. As long as it's in his plan for you, as long as it's your heart desire that your hands, your mind cannot accomplish it, he said that he will do a strange work. Why is he interested? He's doing a strange work. He went ahead to Anna. He said, Come on, don't mock these people. If you mock them, I will allow your bondage to be strong. Jesus said, I led them alive on the third day as a picture. They mocked him. They mocked him. Jesus said, Destroy this temple on the third day as I raised the temple back. They mocked him. But did he rise? Did he rise? He rose. Every desire in your heart that is making men to mock you, that is making men to mock you, that desire shall come to pass by fire. It shall come to pass by thunder. In the name of Jesus. Any man that mocks you, any woman that mocks you, ladies and gentlemen, shall be there to celebrate you again. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. It is men and women that don't understand how God does his work to mock people. Oh, I'm going to become this, I'm going to become that. He said, come on, I, I, I know, it's not you where I know. Now today, daybreak. Now today they break. Even Sarah mocked herself. Mocked the husband. Mocked God when God spoke. But hear me. There are times in your life when you have done what you ought to do. When you have done what the scripture required for you to do. That even your own belief cannot stop the miracle. Your doubt cannot stop the happening. Sarah never believed she would ever have a child. Yes, she had one. 
she desired it to have. But when the time was being prolonged, ladies and gentlemen, she gave up. I hear my spirit. Every dream you're giving up on, it shall come to pass surprisingly. Every desire you're giving up on, it shall come to pass surprisingly. But the power of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ. How shall this be? How shall this be? Take this from me. There is a place in God that we must turn to experience the new. Jesus told us, you are not expected to put a new wine into an old wine scheme. There is a place in God you must turn to experience the new. How many of us are out for the new? How many for the new? What, how do I know that? Watch this. Moses has worked with God for years. Yes, he desires so much of God. In Exodus chapter 33, Moses said to the Lord, If now I have found grace in thy sight, show me your glory. For you now show me the men and women that shall associate with me to take this people into the land of promise. Show me your glory. What was Moses saying? I have been working with you all this while. 40 days I was with you. 40 nights I was with you. I saw your face. But I want to see your face today. <laughs> Show me your glory today. Come on. And God looked at Moses and said, come on. No man can see me to live. Except I unveil myself for the man to see me. He said to Moses from Exodus chapter 13 from verse 18. He said there is a place in me you will stand. I will hide you in the cliff of the rock. And I will cause my goodness to pass before you. And you will see my back part. Ladies and gentlemen. There is a place in God you must stand for you to see the new. I repeat that. There is a place in Christ. You and I must turn to experience in you. What is our place? Not serving God as you used to. Not praying as you used to. Not fasting as you used to. New challenges, they demand new attitude. New challenges, they demand new commitment. Are you hearing what I'm saying? New positions in life, they demand even sacrificial life. Watch it. Before Buhari became president of Nigeria, he could live anyhow, but now he has not. He has to change everything about him. Before Jonathan became president of Nigeria, he could play with the white dance, or what I needed to do. But while he was president, three months in a hole, he was only seeing the wife on television, and the wife was seeing him on television. Yet they were married. The challenges of the new position. If he had not prepared himself for such, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure he would have died in office. Before Buhari ever agreed to be, to be inaugurated, to the inauguration plan, he left Nigeria in the midst of all the preparations. He went to UK and he said he was going to rest for this. What was he doing? He was mentally preparing himself for the new assignment. He was spiritually adjusting his antenna for the new assignment. He was emotionally adjusting his emotion for the new assignment. He was physically preparing himself for the new assignment. Hear me. What you don't prepare for, you never reign in it. What you don't prepare for, you don't really need. EWK yourself. The days of preparations, they are not wasted. They are not wasted. Ladies and gentlemen, I said that to say that there is a place in God. There is a place in God. What is our place? Greater commitment. Greater devotion. Let the songwriter say, I give myself away. If when I gave myself away, the way I gave myself away, God brought me to this level. When I give more of myself away, I will see greater highs in God. I don't know if somebody said to me. When I give more of my time, more of my energy to serve the Lord, if the little that I gave in terms of time had brought me to this, common sense will make me understand. With bigger and greater devotion, no man shall be able to see my break life. 
and I see some people under the influence of this service. Hear me. Between now and the next anniversary, no man shall be able to see your brick light. In the name of Jesus Christ. I asked the Lord, what is this place I must stand? He said, it's a place of total what again? Commitment. A place of what again? A place of what? A place of total commitment. Total devotion. Finally, Isaiah. Sorry, Luke and chapter 5. I'll give you one verse, then we're done. Luke and 5. Verse 37. Luke and chapter the number 5. Look at it. I read it. Verse 37. And he spake also in parable unto them. No man put it a piece of a new garment upon an old. If otherwise both of them, if otherwise then both the new, make it a rent. And the piece that was taken out of the new agreed not with the old. And no man put that new wine into old bottles. As the wine will burst the bottles and be speed and the bottles shall perish. Verse 38. But a new wine must be put into new. A new wine must be put into what again? A new wine must be put into new bottles and both are preserved. Your destiny shall be preserved. Your marriage shall be preserved. This ministry shall be preserved. Your children shall enjoy divine preservation. How shall that be? From on Sunday when this program started, ladies and gentlemen, prayers are being prayed. Prophetic declarations are being made. Do you get that? Prayers are being made and prophetic declarations are being made. Apostle Valerie shared a testimony with me of her mentor. She said she was in a meeting and her mentor was wearing a garment and the mentor told somebody to take off that garment. They took off the garment from her mentor. They placed the garment on her. She said she became numb. Her hands couldn't move. Why? Through the garment that the mentor was wearing that was not removed from the mentor and placed on her the anointing became transferred to her ladies and gentlemen you may not have come on a sunday you may not have come on monday you may not have come on tuesday wednesday even friday saturday but you are here today every blessing of the program shall be replicated in your life shall be replicated in your marriage in your business and in your career in the name of jesus to what medium? The body of Christ, ladies and gentlemen, struggle so much to pray and to fast when we can get it so cheaply. One day, a woman that needed the fruit of the womb was by the altar praying. She prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And a man of God walked to her and said, Woman, why are you drunk? He said, your handmaid is not drunk as you think. But she's already pulling her complaint even before the Lord. The man looked at her and said, go, the God of Israel, meaning the God that placed me here, grant your request. And her barrenness will terminate her. Now watch this again. In 2 Kings and chapter number 2, from verses 8 to 10, the Bible says, and Elijah got a hold of the mantle of Elijah. Watch it. Elijah got a hold of the mantle of Elijah. Lo and behold, he came by River Jordan. When he got to River Jordan, what did he say? He didn't fast, he didn't pray. He took the mantle, the cloth that came from Elijah. Where is the God of Elijah? Bible says he smote the water. And what happened? What I said, Kai, somebody are beating me. I must give you water party. Ladies and gentlemen, I am going to give you a mantle here today. Every blessing of this program shall rest on that mantle. Whatever that happens for Reverend Peter St. Jeremiah and what of life, as you use that mantle, you shall experience a greater one. No, somebody's not saying amen to that again. Amen. Look at your Bible. Elijah worked more miracles than Elijah. By what instrument? To the instrument of the mantle. Elijah had more miracles.
five times more miracles than Elijah had. Well, Elijah was the called one. Elijah was in the call. Elijah was only one of the sons of the prophets in the school of the prophets that Elijah was the administrator. Yet he worked my miracle. You know why? He had the mantle of Elijah. When you have the mantle of your mentor, what your mentor can do, you can do. I didn't hear you say amen. When you have the mantle of your leader, what your leader can do, you can do. You can do. You can do. What cannot confront your leader will never be able to confront you. And what cannot confront this ministry will never be able to confront you. Stand to your feet, everybody. Apostle, would you come? Ed, I come, Reverend Francis. Come. Would you come on, sir? Pastor, please, would you come on, please? Can I get those mantles? Give them to me. Please. Watch what is going to happen here right now. Give it to me. You alone at my heart. Desire you one, oh Lord. She will ship you. Put them down. As the sun and the cold, the water show my soul. Long and I to you. You are You alone. You alone, oh God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I read Second Kings and chapter the number two. From verse the number nine. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elijah, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elijah said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be done unto thee. But if not, it shall not be. Verse 11. And it came to pass as he went on still and thought that behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder and Elijah went up by the white weed into heaven. And Elijah saw, Elijah saw it and he cried my father, my father the chariot of Israel and the horseman thereof and he saw him no more and he took hold of his clothes and rent them in pieces. And he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from here and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. He took the mantle that fell from the master and stood by Jordan. And as he stood by Jordan, look at scriptures being displayed. And he stood by Jordan. Is somebody see there? And stood by Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he has also smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither. And Elijah went over. Praise God forevermore. The great things that are not happening for your equals. Watch it. This ministry is not the only ministry of housing. But it's number one ministry of housing. It's not a declaration. It is a reality. Amen. This ministry came to this land to overtake and to take over. There is an anointing of God upon this man of God. There is an anointing of God upon this ministry. Amen. And that's to today. That anointing shall fall upon this mantle. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Please, would you take one? Take one, one, please. And put it by your chest. 
own strength and Put it by your chest. To you alone, may my spirit you alone, you alone, you alone have my heart. This I alone to worship you. Maraba Santo Cru Maraba Zande Baroco Vasila. Every prophetic declaration from the mouths of your servants, starting from on Sunday, even to this very day, Holy One of Israel, let the answer for delivery, let the anointing for performance, let it flow into these mantles right now. Mason to Krobarabasanda, that as is working, even for the head of this ministry, that as is working for word of law. So every man that wears his garment, he shall walk five times for the individual. He shall walk five times for the marriages. He shall walk five times for the businesses, their careers and their children. But the power of the anointing of the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus. Would you pray, sir? Father, we declare your word is here and amen. The accomplishment of your word Father, we shall see the manifestation. Lord, we declare over these mantles. The anointing over this mandate shall be extended into everyone that we have a hold of this mountain. Lord, sicknesses will disappear. Strange miracles will become their portion. We become their portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Uncommon testimony. Father, you will give to them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' precious name, I decree. Amen. Would you bow our knees and lay hands on them? Precious Heavenly Father, in the name that is above every name. Thank you for letting the unction of your spirit that is upon this ministry rest upon these mantles. That as I wear, my wife wears and my children they wear. The same grace upon this great church shall rest upon us. As members of this church, they wear the same grace, the same unction for greater height shall rest upon them. Spirit of the living God, preach your life upon us. Elijah took the mantle of Elijah and his moat, River Jordan, and River Jordan became parted. Let what cannot confront your man's servant not be able to confront anyone that wears this. What cannot confront God will not be able to confront any man that wears his mantle. Let it be, Father. Mason to Krubarabasanda. So barre pason to Krubarande. Mason de Baraka to Priando. Thank you, Father. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Ladies and gentlemen, history is being made here today. A new thing is being done. And a new thing is being done for every man and every woman. We're crossing from one level onto a better level. No longer by our might or by our power, but by the strength of the Spirit of the living God that is upon this man and upon this entire ministry. Watch it. Anytime you're having a special program, make sure you wear this precisely on wednesday which is going to be an anointing service for divine impartation every businessman businesswoman coming you must wear this hear me ladies and gentlemen if jesus christ were a businessman nothing would stand against him as you wear this you begin to represent the lord jesus in your chosen vocation what cannot stop jesus will not stop you what cannot hinder him will not hinder you even if your business has been down as you wear it it shall come alive again why the same power that is Christ from the dead shall quicken your business alive again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And I did ask the Lord, how shall I give this to my people? 